welcome back to my channel <sighs> today we are doing another sit down video um something that has been long awaited uh i've been needing to make this video but to be honest this year has been a roller coaster in every aspect that i can think of today we're going to be talking about me getting admitted to a mental health facility and i'm just going to share a little bit about why how Wada, 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 wada. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a smuliki backstory, the vibe. Um, I've suffered with suicidal ideation for most of my life. I cannot think of a time when I was not suicidal. The time I can think of is when I was a kid and everything seemed like a fairy tale. Like, I feel like I was put into a facade my entire childhood thinking that my dad was a superhero and he did everything that's what i assumed that's what i was made to believe um from my mom especially because she tried to protect us in a lot of ways um and when i was a little bit older and actually became more logical i think i started realizing things like it became more of a reality and actually like realized okay this is this and this is that in high in primary school it wasn't as bad i did get bullied a lot because i was really really skinny i was like one of the boys i liked sports my teeth was the worst thing ever like i can just think my teeth was just so bad and like my hair was super 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 thin I was bullied like my entire primary school especially when i went to a normal primary school was i went to a muslim school initially from like grade double double note until like grade four and then I went to like a normal government primary school in grade 5 and like 5 to 7 I just felt completely outside like I was an outsider completely and yeah um, my entire life changed in high school and when my life changed in high school I just didn't want to live I struggled for a long time and I never got proper treatment at all like I just didn't get treatment I don't think um, my mom or should I say my parents were aware of anything regarding treatment and how to actually deal with it. If anything, I think they just thought us acting out as a teen, especially when I was having temper tantrums and wanting to like run away or wanting to kill myself or whatever the case is. Um, so I never really got proper help. I did see a few therapists, um, you know, kind of throughout my life. But it wasn't like proper treatment treatment that my mom or my parents got for me. It was things I tried doing for myself. Um, but yeah, I have been struggling most of my life with it and mainly depression. Like my depression and my anxiety have gotten so deep. Like it, it was. It, it's just gotten worse over the years, and I cannot think of a time when I was not anxious. And that's actually so fucking scary because I was a very I'm a fucking Leo, like we act really confident in general. So for me to be anxious, it's like, damn, <clears throat> what girl, you look confident. Nah, I'm a Leo with the best fakes when it comes to confidence because we actually are the most insecure type of people. That's just the fucking truth. I have been struggling through like out my life and then not being in contact with my dad for two years. It did take a toll on me in a lot of ways because I did try so, so hard before he left to form a relationship with him and it just wasn't ever gonna work out and for me to have cut him off and make that decision deep down it did hurt me you know like no child wants to be no no child deserves to feel like they need to cut their parents off you know um so yeah that was something that was lingering and all like the past relationships i've had where i felt like guys or men in general men in general like basically used me or made me feel like less than or just putting myself in situations where i actually just damaged myself a bit all of that was like completely traumatic and then i had an abortion last year and that was just completely 
shocking to everything that i was already going through because it's like damn i'm already having to go through all this family issues and childhood trauma and now i didn't think i could fall pregnant and now i fell pregnant and then i'm not not keeping my baby and i'm in love with this person and i'm like okay we could have kept the baby and it's like what the fuck and then i'm just like at a point in my life where i'm just losing myself because within my relationship a lot of things were happening and it's like i'm losing myself and i just got myself back and it's just like it's just so much happening at once and then the new year starts and this is now january the new year starts and i am so motivated to do so much and trying so hard to get myself back on track because to be honest i wasn't okay i genuinely was not okay before this year started but i was so motivated to make a change within myself because you have to want to make that change within yourself like you can do whatever you want to do but if you don't want to make that change it's not gonna happen and then my mom and dad passed away and i just i was so close to her and i took her as another mom and she took me as another child and i couldn't even really grieve that relationship because my partner deserved more of grieving and i needed to be that support for him and i couldn't even be that support for him because he's not an emotional person and it's just like damn i don't know what i'm doing with my life genuinely and then i get a distance between me and my partner and then he cheats <clears throat> and after he cheats i fucking lose it i don't think i've ever been cheated on or at least i never found out if i was ever cheated on like that i can think of <sighs> i just thought we were both on the same wavelength within the relationship so for him to have cheated at such a difficult time we i'm supposed to be there for him it's just like what more like i'm already going through my own personal battles my own family battles my own everything my relationship battles and now this add on of like cheating and it's like dude i'm i i'm already feeling like shit and i need to be that person for you but how do i be that person for you when you firstly pushing me away acting nonchalant acting distant and then you cheat and then i react in the worst way ever and i fucked him up i hit him and i i i reacted in the most toxic way ever and i don't blame myself for it because i was overwhelmed and i'm not going to say that oh i was fucking abusive or i am an abusive person because no at the end of the day some people need to realize that you can't push and push and push and push people and expect them to just enjoy it i was emotionally financially mentally abused for almost so so much of my life and from my partner as well and then he cheats on me emotionally cheating on me emotionally abusing me basically and then i react violently and because i reacted violently he made me seem like i'm this monster and now i'm thinking okay i am this monster because why do i react like this why am i like my dad and i just thought i'm this violent person that just reacts like my dad because my dad was violent to me and my brothers and my mom my entire life and i just thought this that's me i thought i'm just like him but deep down i'm like i'm not like that i'm such a fucking caring person i'm not i'm not a monster you know so with everything that was happening i just wanted to die and it's like dying would just seem like the easiest option and it was an add on to my relationship too because he just lost his mom and now his partner wants to die too it's like everyone wants to leave him and i'm like it's not even like that i've been wanting to die and he doesn't realize that he's pushing me into not even wanting to exist anymore you know so then i was like you know what i'm going to seek the treatment because he was like you need help and i went to like see a few therapists and the therapist suggested that i actually get admitted because i they were actually fucking scared like the therapist was speaking to a scare that i wasn't going to make it till the next day and i wanted i like i didn't think i was going to make it yet i didn't even want to make it and i don't blame myself for not wanting to make it because it's like damn how much more should a person endure you know like 
like i'm not saying that my life is completely like the worst life ever nah everyone has their difficulties but there comes a time where it's like you're just enduring and enduring and enduring and it's like damn what's happening god why you question god and you're like why god like why like like just take me already like i'm tired i'm tired of the suffering i'm tired of of forcing myself to survive each day and it's just like it doesn't make sense <sighs> i had to like get admitted and thankfully my employee assisted me completely my employer my employer yeah my employer assisted me completely with the leave days and everything and i got admitted and it just seemed like something i genuinely needed and i thought okay i'm gonna get help and that i'm the problem and then I have so much problems within me and that I'm just this monster and that I'm just this crazy person that doesn't know how to control themselves emotionally and that I'm abusive and that I'm like, I just thought so much negative things. And then in the first week of being there, I was just like, what the fuck? Like what the actual fuck? <clears throat> it was so eye opening. Because then I realized that, nah, like I actually opened my eyes to the person I am and I'm like, mm, bad things happen to me, but I'm not the bad person over here. Like I'm not the bad person over here. And it takes a lot for a bad person to even acknowledge that there's something wrong with them. It takes a bad person to even acknowledge that they need help. It takes a lot. It takes a bad person to actually seek the help that's not a bad person a bad person will never do that a bad person will just stay bad forever <laughs> and that's one thing that my therapist said to me she's like oh like if you genuinely were this monster that you think that you were you wouldn't be here right now and i was like what the fuck actually damn i still didn't believe it it took me a while to actually come to terms with the fact that i am actually not the monster in my story i am not the crazy person in my story i am not the mad person in my story i just need to deal with my reactiveness i need to deal with how i endure certain things and how i don't allow my emotions to get the best of me and how i and how much i lacked boundaries within myself and within every little thing i did in every relationship i have in my life including my relationships with my family and um that is why i got admitted to a okay, so, um i got admitted for 21 days and it was the best 21 days of my life from like the worst of the worst days there to the best of the best days to the most fun days to the most craziest eye-opening days like each day was so worth it now that i think about it well there i didn't realize a lot but once out i realized a lot <sighs> and i'm so fucking grateful for that experience and i'm so grateful that my medical aid was able to pay it because to be honest i wasn't going to be able to afford that shit <laughs> I, I i i wasn't going to be able to afford it and it was so good that when I was going through all the shit I was going through like now the past two months I genuinely wanted to get back I wanted to get admitted again because I was like I needed to like get admitted I needed that help I needed that push I needed that support because I was spiraling again and um I spoke to a therapist um at my work actually it's called healthy company and this lady helped me through like she spoke to me for two hours straight just getting me out of that funk that i was in and only like speaking to her made me realize that i don't necessarily have to get readmitted but i do need to continue the work that i already did learn you know because it's a it's an ongoing journey like me being admitted for 21 days doesn't mean i'm fixed doesn't mean i'm healed doesn't mean i am a good but it does mean that there's a good start like there's a good foundation to my healing and I won't lie, not having the proper support once out of a so did dampen and affect that foundation a lot because 
I kept on going back to my ex. I had bad, 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 bad fights with my mom. My brother was not helpfully anyway emotionally supporting me or even physically by just always being uh, you know and it was just like i didn't have the support that i needed when i did get out of that place so that's one thing i can say is very important when getting admitted even if it's support and being alone and like finding strangers out there that's even better than being in a home or in a, an environment that's not adding anything positive that helps you actually continue that healing continue that growing i am trying that's the most i can say at this point is that i am trying i'm not at my best i'm not at my worst but i am trying and the hard days are hard and the good days are amazing but what i'm gonna say is that this shit is not easy so when you're having hard days don't allow that to control your entire life because it is not easy it's never going to be easy especially when you have years of shit to unlearn years of childhood trauma to get through years of abuse to get through it's not going to be easy and um what i can say is that i'm not perfect in any aspect a lot of the things that has happened to me is because of my own choices and choices because i didn't know any better choices because i wanted to feel pain in a lot of aspects and um what i can say also is regarding your healing like it's not it's not abc there's different things that are included so it's a one a two a three then you go to b so it's not just a b c it's not easy and i thought it would have been a lot easier especially when i got out of the mental health facility but it wasn't and it's still not easy um people will say just pray just pray just pray fuck y'all that's all i can say about just praying because god doesn't just say take the food eat the food no 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 you gotta work you gotta actually put in the effort you gotta put in the time you gotta actually try to want to heal you gotta put in that you know to heal and obviously you gotta pray you gotta believe in a higher power or become spiritually close to your maker because without god you are nothing that's what i just believe um on the hardest of my hardest days my faith kept me kept me going but also my faith was something that broke me the most you know because you expect your faith to just fix everything sometimes but yeah um a good support is needed like a good support is needed an amazing support that understands and is willing to be there for you even when you are not wanting or even when you are not welcoming to that you know and you need it like you need to want to you need to want to be better if you don't want to be better it's, it's pointless that was an introduction to everything and i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope i gave some insight i hope you guys understand just a little bit of an inch of what happened why what 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 but yeah um be careful when you get into relationships with um genuinely that's what i can say is be careful we get into relationships with and don't force relationships with anyone including your family like accept people for who they are don't try to recolor people like that's one thing i struggle with bye my money makers